Hello, this is Matthew Miller from the ZDNet Smartphones and Cell Phones blog. Uh, today I wanted to show you my iPhone 3G running with DataViz's Documents to Go program. So, um, I'll zoom in right there as so you can see the logo, Documents to Go. And let's go ahead and launch it, and I'll go ahead and shut off the overhead light. So as you can see, the splash screen, Documents to Go, featuring their intact technology. Now, let me get a little bit closer as I try to hold this steady for you. So when you first launch it, you'll see, um, you actually, let me just go to what you'll actually see, help. So when you first launch the application, you will see these getting started screens. And I highly recommend that you do go through them. There's seven of them. Uh, you can actually scroll up and down on some of them as well. But they are very helpful. So the first one, you notice, kind of talks about what it can do. And then it ha explains things such as the home screen and local files, desktop files, documents to go with Exchange attachments, which is the version I have here. And if you have Exchange, I highly recommend it. it talks about the desktop, and I'll show you that on my Mac as well. Then it also talks about how to get documents to and from your device and syncing those device documents, setting up your exchange account. And these are the most important. These are the quick tips. So it has uh, toolbar swipes, has tool tips. When you tap and hold, it'll tell you a tool tip. How to select. And it says a double tap to select a word, triple tap, triple tap to select a paragraph. And this one I missed the first time, and I highly encourage you to pay attention to it. If you want to select something more than a word or less than a paragraph, you tap and hold to bring up the magnifying glass. And if you continue holding it, you'll see uh, the glass magnifying glass pulse, and you'll also see a more solid border around the magnifying glass. And then you just start dragging to select the text. Very easy. And that's all the help. But I highly recommend you kind of go through the um, the uh, the help there to get started. So, when you launch Documents to Go, you'll see local files, desktop files, attachments. Attachments you won't see until you set that up. Let's go back to the settings here real quick. So there's an About Documents to Go. Now this version may be an earlier version. I think the full uh, retail version will be a little bit later than this beta that I'm testing out. And you can select and set your file format for new files that you create. One thing I'd like to mention too, as you know by now probably from seeing the product, Documents to Go currently supports only the word processing. Their Excel spreadsheet module will be coming for free to everybody who buys the current version and you will get that as soon as they release it. I haven't seen that yet and I'm not sure when that's going to be released but I know they are working hard on, on getting that rolled out. You can't beat it though. I mean, $4.99 for Documents to Go and $9.99 for Documents to Go with Exchange Attachments. Those are killer deal deals. I mean, I've spent $40 to $50 for office applications on my mobile devices before. So $5 and $10 is, is no brainer to me. Anyway, back to new file formats. So as you can see here, rather than just what other applications have, um, 2004 XP, those formats, you can also select and have your documents start with the 2007-2008, which is the XML formatted documents. So that's the first application to support that as well. Help I showed, clear, will clear all your recent files, any desktops that you connect to, and then Microsoft Exchange. And if you tap Exchange, it'll walk you through a bunch of the, uh, I can't really show my Exchange settings, but it'll walk you through a bunch of the Exchange settings and setup for your personal Exchange server. And you can also add multiple desktops. Right now I have my Mac, which I will show you in a little bit. And if you add a new desktop, it gives you this passcode. You start the desktop application, and you just enter the passcode, and you're connected. Very simple. You don't have to enter in any URLs into the web browser or anything else. You just start their desktop client which I will show you, and enter that passcode and you'll pair up. Okay, that's the settings. If we go over here to tap the right, we say I can create a new Word document or an email with attachment. Let's just say I want to do an email with attachment. Okay, 
you select a file, I'll say a local file, go with one of the samples, and then you just tap away and send your message off, alright? Okay. Back to documents to go here. And that's the main screen again. Okay, so if I just wanted to open up the local file, as you can see here, there's doc, spreadsheets, and PowerPoint, and PDF. If I select a PowerPoint, it says right there, it'll open with the inbuilt iPhone viewer. So give it a second, and there you go. And if you rotate your device, pop it in the landscape, it does support the native, you know, it's the full native viewer, so it supports pinch and zoom. Double tap, zoom out, that kind of thing. Okay. Switch back to local files here. Same thing with the PDF. Opens in the iPhone viewer. There we go. And power. Oh, yeah, PowerPoint as well. And there you go. It goes through all all the types of files that you would expect on the iPhone. It supports. And we do know for sure there will be an Excel edit and creation tool module coming to Documents to Go. PowerPoint, I haven't heard anything, but uh, their products on other platforms um, do support PowerPoint, so we may see that as well, which is to me is not as big of a deal. So let's just start with a Word document, because this is what's really supported on this device. Okay, so here we have an existing Word document. Let me just scroll down. This is just a sample here. And then at the bottom, you'll see there's tools. Now, in portrait mode, you see there's three little dots below that because as I grab and scroll, there's one, two, three pages of uh, icons. If I was to flip my device to uh, landscape mode, it'll automatically rotate the document and now it will have two pages as you can see here because they just fit better so I'll just leave it in landscape mode if I was to tap and hold on one of these it says it gives me a little pop-up that explains what it is save and save as and then if I let go of it you can see there's icons for save and save as if I tap save as it gives me where do I want to save it and what's the file name we'll cancel that tap and hold on this one it says cut, copy, paste. Let go. There we see. Cut, copy, paste, and select all. Speaking of select, as I said, a double tap on a word selects a word. Triple tap will select a paragraph. And then if we tap and hold, it starts to pulse and it turns into a bold around. The, uh, I can go up here, select whatever I want to, let go, that's selected. Now if I tap cut, copy, paste, I can cut, come down here, start up my keyboard. As you can see, it's the traditional iPhone keyboard. And then I tap that again, and I can paste it in there. There we go, cut and paste. And also, just so you know, the keyboard is the full iPhone keyboard, so it has the predictive text and everything else as you, as you enter data, so that's good, fully supports that. Uh, the next option over is email. Do you want to save changes? Say no. Should pop open. Ask me if it's save it. And it pops open, and I get to create an email message and use that as attachment. Okay, let's just go back to the Word document. Okay, so we're going through these icons here. The next one over, we tap and hold it, character formatting. Here we go. We've got bold, italic, underline. And if we tap this, this is uh, the color of the font itself. And you tap this, it's the color of the highlighting for the selected fonts. 
from uh, I guess that palette that you see there is these available fonts. So that's uh, 16 available colors for the font and for the highlighting. Okay. Next one over is paragraph alignment. So there's left, center, right, justified, and then uh, next icon over is bullets. So if I was to tap the bullets, you would see a bullet would appear. Okay. Now if I go back, I could tap numbers and a number whoop, and a number would appear there now also along with that if we go down here we say return if we were to tab in create a numbered list test return there's number two but if I indent one you'll see It'll create my outline and continue to do that. Now, let me see if it, uh, let's just add some more font here. Test 2. Return. If we indent again, whoops. Went the wrong way. I went left. Let's go right. Let's see if it goes right again. Yep. There we go. So you can continue to create outlines, as you can see, with, uh, with the bullets and the numbering. And as I already showed here, this is indent and unindent, and I'm sure what that term is. Over here we've got the find. So if we want to find test, and we say search, it'll actually find the word, and we can say find next to jump to the next one, replace, or replace all. And to replace, you tap this little arrow up in the left corner. If I tap that right there, it says replace with what? Case sensitive off. Case sensitive off or on. Whole words off or on. And what I want to replace it with. Okay. Forget about that. Now let's move to the next tabs. Over here we've got another one. This is the zoom. So as you can see, they don't have a dynamic zoom because of the things that you do with uh, with your selecting of text and stuff like that. So it uses a zoom controller. So if we tap this. It can go all the way down to 50%, or we can go all the way up to 200% on the zoom. Okay, go back to the 75 or so. The next one over there is uh, jumping around the document. So you can either jump to the front, jump to the middle, or jump to the bottom. Just for a navigation means, just a, a quick way to get places. If we tap the next icon over, it's undo and redo. I'm not quite sure how many different levels of undo and redo there are. There's two. I don't know how many of it goes back. So undo and redo there. Uh, this next tab gives you some stats. Word count, character count, characters with spaces, and paragraphs. There it is for the whole document, not just the selection I had. So it's 650 word document, characters, characters, spaces, and paragraphs. Just give you some stats on your document. You can also press the I and get some more information on your document. Okay? So that's pretty much all of the functionality that you see in uh, Office and do Documents to Go Word module there. And let me see. Oh, this one, this button down here is for sorting. You can sort by file name, mod, last modified size type. Uh, we tap here. We can go new. If I go Word document, boom! It just starts up a blank sheet. It has all the same functions that I had before, and it starts up and launches in whatever I selected, as I showed you in the setting. You can also do a search, and you can search through documents. If you have a huge list of documents and you need to find certain ones, as you start to type, it'll quick filter your uh, your files. Okay, and then edit. Similar to email, you can then multi-select items and say delete if you would like to. You know what? On this version, I don't know how I go back. So I don't want to delete anything. Have to start up documents to go again. Now, this is, as I said, this is a beta. There's uh, the later release version has a few of these things fixed. It also has uh, a couple other things with the desktop. And then attachments, I I can't show you there because of the email that I have in Exchange. 
but it's very similar um, and I have screenshots of, uh, of that in my image gallery. And then there's desktop files and my docs to go. So on the desktop, which I'll show you in just a second, you can set up uh, folders and if you make any changes on your iPhone or iPod Touch or on your desktop, those are automatically synced back and forth uh, when you have your iPhone connected to your uh, documents to go. You don't have to do any anything else. This button here can also search for your desktop. Right now mine's not on. And uh, let's go ahead and pause this while I turn it on and I'll show you the desktop client. Okay, so on my Macintosh, here's the documents to go desktop client. Um, as you can see down here, there's add folder, remove a folder, or edit folders. I've got just one folder in here now for test. Uh, you can also check for updates. Over here it lists your iPhones or iPod touches that you have connected. And then uh, up in the settings, it's pretty much the same. Add device, remove device, sync, that kind of thing. So let me go ahead and start up my iPhone here. And now that we're in documents to go, so let's just go over here. And if I say sync. Oh, whoops, I forgot to turn on Wi-Fi a second. Okay, now that I have both of uh, my iPhone and my desktop on Wi-Fi, if I was to tap uh, the sync button here, so you're searching for desktop, and then syncs them up. There's a button here as well on the desktop. I can say sync, and it makes the changes. As you can see here, it also says I'm connected, last sync, and the folder is up here. Let's drag this down. Let's see. Let's zoom in on that folder a little bit here. So there's my documents to go folder. If I double click on that, it opens up. It has the same documents that I have here. So let's just say I wanted to uh, get rid of one thing. If I did that, move one thing to trash. All right. And if I look in here, that is missing, right? Okay. So it's a seamless syncing process. And when you're connected, that syncing should be automatic. And it's quite easy to set up a bunch of folders with documents and sync back and forth to your iPhone and Mac or your Windows PC. You do need to have a Wi-Fi connection with both devices on the same network. Um, that's the, currently the only way to do it. There's no cable method, uh, which I'm not sure if it's coming or not, but uh, but we'll see. So it's fairly easy to get uh, files on and off, and that's a look at Documents to Go on the Apple iPhone and iPod Touch. Quite a nice application. Comes al come a long ways, and I look forward to the Excel spreadsheet uh, module as well. Thanks for watching.